Hello everyone, my name is Deb Taylor and welcome to our virtual college exploration for all Ohio students. This is sponsored by the Ohio Association of College Admission Counseling and uh, Virtual uh, Strive Scan, excuse me. Thanks for joining us this evening. We have a few housekeeping items before we get started. First, you can use the Q&A button on your screen to type your question to our presenters at any time. Your camera and microphone are off, so our presenters cannot see you or hear you. This is just one of many sessions that, is, that are happening right now, so please check out the full schedule at the website oacac.org. This evening's session is being recorded and should be available in about a week at the same website, oacac.org. So I'd like to turn it over to our presenters. Thank you very much. Good evening. Um, welcome to DePaul University. Uh, I am Rebecca Moore. Um, I am uh, your admission counselor for the entire state of Ohio. So I'm, it's nice to meet you all. Uh, I am um, working in Greencastle, Indiana. Um, and actually I'm in my office this afternoon. Um, we are uh, hosting guests on campus in person um, with limited numbers. Uh, I have worked in higher education for decades. Um, mm -hmm. And um, I didn't attend DePauw, but I went to a small liberal arts college. Um, our children all went to small liberal arts colleges. Uh, my husband went to a small liberal arts college. Um, and so we feel strongly about the liberal arts education. Um, we believe that there are some real advantages. Um, and um, I have um, invited two of our students um, who have been working with our Office of Admission to join me this evening because I think it's important to hear the student perspective. Um, and so I will go ahead and let them introduce themselves as well. Hi guys, my name's Allie Tallon. I'm a current senior here at DePaul. I'm from Minnesota and you, I know that it might seem like a far drive from Ohio, but I promise you it goes by a lot quicker when you're going to somewhere you love. And I am a kinesiology and Spanish major right now. Thanks, Allie. Hi everyone, I'm Abby. I'm a current junior. Um, I am from Columbus, proud Upper Arlington grad, um, but obviously I'm so happy to be back on campus. I'm a political science major and we'll talk about my invol involvement on campus throughout this tour or of this session. <laughs> Abby's a tour guide. <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and share my screen and we will get started. Um, so um, welcome again to DePaul University. Uh, we are a small liberal arts college located in Greencastle, Indiana. Uh, we have um, uh, been here since about 1837, uh, you will learn about a lot of the opportunities that we have here at DePauw. Uh, but I want to start out by uh, sharing um, one of our promises that we have been, uh, that we make to our students and our graduates, uh, also employers, um, graduate programs. We have something that we call the gold commitment and it's our promise to um, all of you that the education that is provided to students at DePauw is top notch. And um, at six months post graduation, we survey all of our students, or excuse me, all of our graduates, um, and ask them where they are in their pathway. Um, historically, pre pandemic, 97% uh, of our graduates have been on their way, um, either in their first job or a graduate program or a fellowship program. Uh, we want it to be 100%. And so we are in our third year of our gold commitment. Um, and what that means is if students um, um, accomplish some things, um, actually things that they've been doing for uh, ages, um, then we have their back if they're not on their way at six months. And what that means is we have alumni and friends of the university who are happy to hire our graduates um, in their chosen career path or a student or a graduate may choose to come back to DePauw for a semester tuition free. So everything that we're talking about in our presentation really leads to that gold commitment and that student experience um, that's preparing them. Um, 
it starts with, um, um, I'll start out with refreshing your memory or sharing information about who we are, um, just to establish that to begin with. So we have about 2,000 students at DePauw. Uh, some of them are in our School of Music, and that's why we are called a university. So we have a College of Liberal Arts and a School of Music. We are a quite diverse student population with 24% of our students identifying as students of color, 13% identify as international students, and 63% identify as Caucasian or white. Um, you'll see that 20% of our students are first generation college students, and then also about 20% of our students already have some um, family member who is attending or did attend DePauw. Um, we are a national and an international university. Um, one of the um, facets about DePaul that we'll share with you is that almost 30% of our students are intercollegiate athletes. So that's just one, one piece of a DePaul experience that many of our students are involved in. But we have many other former high school athletes who choose to participate in intramurals or even just use our athletic facilities. Um, I want to jump back to that gold commitment um, now that we've a sort of established who our students are and, and where they come from. Um, and our gold commitment and everything that we do here starts with a strong academic foundation. We offer almost 50 majors here at DePauw, many more minors. Um, and you'll see listed on the screen um, some of the top 10 most popular majors. We have a strong tradition in the STEM fields um, and health professions, but as you see, economics is our most popular major. Um, we do not offer a degree in business per se, but we have many graduates who will go on in the business field um, for their careers. Um, if you don't happen to see the area that you're most interested in listed in the top 10 majors, that doesn't mean that we don't have a strong program here. It just means that not everybody wants to major in um, some of those disciplines. And we also offer a school of music. We have four degree programs. If you're interested in music, uh, we can certainly connect you with George Paulton, who is our music admission coordinator. Um, but I want to emphasize that all students at DePauw, including our liberal arts students, are encouraged to take classes through our School of Music and participate in uh, the different ensembles, bands, choirs, um, the orchestra, uh, performances. Um, and that's why we have such a strong School of Music here, because we have many very talented liberal arts students who still wish to participate. Um, and so at DePaul, we're on a 4141 semester schedule. So what that means is we have two regular semesters um, and students will take about four courses a semester. And um, as part of that, the first year or so, students are taking courses across a wide range of areas. Um, then by the middle of their third semester, they will select a major. Um, so about a third of their courses will be within their major, but they then have about a third left to take um, classes in a wide range of areas. They may focus on one of our four honor scholar or fellows programs and you see information um, on my screen here. Um, they may choose to double major, they could major in minor, um, or simply take classes that are really fascinating to them that are outside of their major, but they still are interested in learning more in that field. Um, I want to touch on the Honor Scholar program and then Abby is a member of our Management Fellows program, so I, I'm going to ask her to share a little bit of her information, but the Honor Scholar program is the more traditional honors program similar to some other colleges. Our students will take um, classes together um, in a seminar format. Uh, the students are coming from a wide range of academic interests. They haven't declared their major when they apply because you can apply and should apply most likely as a high school senior. Um, the highlight of that program is a senior project um, of your own choosing that you um, select faculty to help advise you with. Um, it's sort of a program for students who just can't stop thinking and talking about a certain topic and want to delve, delve even more 
um, deeply into that subject matter. So the Management Fellows Program that Abby's a member of is the oldest of all of the honor or the Fellows Programs. It was um, it will be 40 years old next year. So Abby, you want to share a little bit about um, what the Management Fellows Program offers, and I think the Media Fellows Program also offers very similar opportunities. Um, but I'll let you go ahead and chat about that. Yeah, thanks. So the Media Fellows Program and Management Fellows are very similar, like Becca said. But um, as a Management Fellow. Um, I can talk a little bit about my experience. So um, how I like to describe the Management Fellows Program is kind of an additional kind of segment to your liberal arts courses that kind of encompasses more uh, finances, accounting, um, and ethics of business kind of coursework. So you take about one course every semester built into your schedule um, to fulfill those course requirements. Also, in addition to taking those kinds of courses, you'll have uh, certain amounts of speakers that you have to attend. Um, they have like mandatory amounts, but these can either be in lecture formats or um, panels and they do uh, lectures typically tend to be alums or all the speakers are alums and the lecturers tend to be more uh, focused giving advice to management fellow students. Um, whereas the panels tend to be about certain industries they're called industry insights so those can range from consulting to uh, finance marketing international business uh, public affairs and law. Uh, so they do give a wide variety of panels and information. So even if you're not necessarily um, an e econ economics person, um, I'm certainly not a political science major, um, but they have things for you so you can feel like you're really getting something out of the program. Um, additionally, a wide variety of our like uh, requirements have to do with like getting your resume, cover letter, and LinkedIn reviewed so that you look like extremely employ employable upon graduation and even before then. Um, almost all management fellows have a job way before graduation and they're pushed to have a job uh, around the beginning of their senior year. So it's a great program. There are so many endless contacts with alums. I have so many uh, great mentors and great connections with CEOs of software engineering um, and finance firms that aren't related necessarily to anything I wanna do, but are great individuals and alums that took the time to sit down with me um, and give some advice on my career path. Thanks for sharing that, Abby. Um, with the Media Fellows Program, um, the highlight of the Management Fellows Program and Media Fellows most likely would be um, considered the semester-long internship program. And Abby will talk a little bit more about that later. But um, And the Environmental Fellows Program offers um, the opportunity for field research. Um, and obviously, they each have a focused um, area or career. Um, I want to talk a little bit about what happens with a student um, when they, even before they arrive on campus, we provide a lot of support to our students and um, all of our incoming students will take a first year seminar class. Over the summer, they're sent descriptions of those courses that are going to be held in the fall for their first semester. They rank their top 10 choices. They're assigned to a seminar class. And um, so they get to know their professor. There's an upper class student who takes that course with them. Um, and that mentor doesn't grade their work. They don't teach the class. They're there um, to meet with them even outside of the, the classroom. Um, Abby, I'm gonna let you take over um, and show our academic quad um, and talk a little bit about some of the other support that is offered and give people a chance to see what our campus looks like. It's a lovely campus, a um, lot of green space, uh, but I'll let you talk about the academic quad. I'm now I'm unmuted. <laughs> um, so yeah, like Becca said, this is academic quad. Um, this is kind of where the main hustle and bustle occurs. You could see a lot of students walking back and forth between class. Uh, the three main buildings that we have here, are Asbury Hall, Royal West Library, and Harrison Hall over here. Um, and each of these buildings house different departments with professors office hours. So mainly uh, anthropology, econ, political science, uh, the classics department happen in this area. Um, you see a lot and a lot of times students studying on the grass, like Becca mentioned, it's a great place to just kind of hang out, throw the frisbee around. Um, but the most important part, I'm biased, of the of academic quad is the academic resource center right here where my mouse is. Um, and here at DePaul, you have to complete courses in uh, three competencies, so quantitative reasoning, writing, and speech. And this center is dedicated to just making sure that students um, are doing really well in all of those areas. So you have support, you have peer mentors that were um, designated as like, like experts in this area. So I have a friend who came in and during her first year seminar, like she thought she was a great writer. I never really had a problem with writing in high school. Um, in her first paper in college, she got a D um, and she had taken every paper there to the W Center, the writing center, 
Uh, she's a senior now and she's never gotten below an A on a paper at DePauw, which Ali can attest to is very hard to do. Um, <laughs> but yeah, this center is a great resource. There are so many other centers on campus that are dedicated to making sure that students feel supported um, and like they are able to perform their best. Another one of these programs is the STEM Guides program. So um, those are specifically, we don't have TAs at DePauw, but these STEM Guides are also students, student tutors that are designated to each class. So um, I had a STEM guide who was just for my statistics class, my time period, um, and I could just take my homework to him and he would sit down and work through problems with me because he had taken that class the previous semester. Um, and our professor thought he was really competent in that area. So there are a lot of ways you have a great support system academically here at DePauw um, just to help you succeed. Thanks, Abby. Um, I'm going to go ahead and um, share my screen again. And so I started by sharing with you that everything that we're talking about really supports that gold commitment and what we are providing to our students. So what we require our students to do in order to be eligible for the gold commitment is to graduate in good academic standing, um, to be good citizens, so things that students are naturally doing. Um, we also expect them to take on some leadership roles and also complete some experiential learning. So what's that? That's um, lifelong life experiences outside of the classroom. Um, so a lot of learning takes place outside of the classroom, certainly. Um, and in order to support our students, um, when it comes to finding those experiences and leadership opportunities, the university has um, um, organized some of these into what we call our centers. And so we have eight main centers across campus, uh, but there are even others as well. Um, and so let's see, we'll talk about the um, Hubbard Center for Student Engagement. Um, before I do that, I just want to mention that um, we also have the Prindle Institute for Ethics, which is located um, in our 520 acre nature park. It's about a mile off campus, um, easy to run to if you're an athlete, uh, walk to um, otherwise, um, or certainly you could drive over there. But um, the Prindle Institute for Ethics provides um, great opportunities for our student students. Each of these centers will offer a lecture series, typically uh, networking, internship opportunities or connections. Um, also, um, maybe um, even an, an internship on campus with those centers. Um, they offer programming. Um, so a whole um, um, a range of opportunities, support and advising as well. So I'm going to um, jump to the Hubbard Center for Student Engagement and talk a little bit about that. Um, that is a center that every single DePaul student should have some contact with. And we, we make sure that happens because during orientation, someone from the Hubbard Center will go and meet with that first year seminar class and introduce some of the support and opportunities offered through the center. So with the Hubbard Center, you have all kinds of advising like um, our winter term and May term, which um, those are those non-traditional um, uh, parts of the semester, and I'll explain that in a moment, um, but also career services, resume writing, um, mock interviews, uh, network, alumni network, um, some personality tests to help you as you're trying to figure out what it is you want to pursue with your career and what makes sense with your personality. Also, um, we offer um, support for study abroad programs. Um, we have a full-time health professions advisor as well as a full-time pre-law advisor. We also offer graduate program advising. So there's the Cocolet um, uh, leadership, uh, um, Oh, it's the Cocolette, um, help me. Um, the Cocolette Peer Tutors? Peer Tutors, so another peer tutor. Thank you, Abby. Um, and so those are upper class students who are trained to help you as you're starting your resume and planning and talking about your, your plans for DePauw. Um, so there are a lot of things that are offered through the Hubbard Center. Um, I'm gonna ask you, Allie, um, there we go. Um, so this um, Hubbard Center offers a lot of opportunities to help you with your experiential learning component of um, the gold commitment. 
And um, winter term and May term, let me just stop and share with you. Winter term takes place during the month of January and we do require our students to complete at least two situations for experiential learning. And winter term and May term um, give students the opportunity to um, take a break from the regular semester. It's, um, uh, they offer um, many different courses on campus that are taken as a pass fail course. So it gives you a chance to take something that maybe isn't related to your major. Maybe it's something that's just maybe an interest. Um, and we also offer over um, 20 different study abroad programs during the month of uh, January and a few during the month of May. Um, so if you're a student who wants to get some uh, experience outside of our country, but you don't necessarily want to go for an entire semester, you could take one of our winter term or May term trips. Um, we also offer students the opportunity to do internships or shadowing um, during those months. Um, and again, those are um, graded on a pass fail basis. Um, Allie, do you want to share a little bit about um, what you've done during your winter terms? Yeah, I would love to. And May term, excuse me. No, it's totally good. So I went on a May term to Italy last two years ago. Um, it was the perfect opportunity to go abroad because I am a swimmer and I did not want to miss out on my season. So I chose to go on a May term. It was focusing on history and monuments of ancient Rome. And it was led by two professors, one of the Italian department and one in the classics department. They are married, but it was really fun. We went from Rome to Naples to Pompeii, and we even had a day in Capri, which is a little island, which was really fun. And then a winter term I took my freshman year was campanology, and it is not the study of camping. It is the study of bell ringing, which I did not know when I signed up for it because I did not read the course description, but it was a very pleasant surprise because I got to learn about how to ring handbells all the way up to ringing giant cathedral bells, which even though it's not related to kinesiology or Spanish, it's something I'm really happy I got to try because it was really, really fun and interesting. Thanks for sharing that. Um, and so another um, uh, uh, area that um, our students are very uh, involved in is studying abroad. So we're ranked fourth in the nation for sending our students abroad during the semester or winter term. Um, we have over 140 sites that are pre-approved for students to um, travel abroad. Um, and they can go basically any place. Um, many sites have more than one opportunity when it comes to whether you're doing an internship for part of it, taking courses at another university. Uh, you also have opportunities to travel. There are different housing arrangements. You could be in a university residence hall. You could be living in a flat. You could be renting a room from a family. Um, so all different kinds of experiences are available through our study abroad program. And we really do encourage our students to participate. We think that that's a great uh, way to um, um, enhance your education and bring that back to DePaul to share in your courses as well in your conversations. Um, we also have um, students who will do internships. Um, Abby, I would like you to share about your Management Fellows opportunity and, and Media Fellows also have similar ones, but any student can do an internship during, the during a semester. So Abby, do you want to talk a little bit about your Management Fellows experience? Yeah, sure. So um, as Becca mentioned earlier, every management fellow completes a paid semester long internship uh, during their junior year. And most of the sophomore year management fellow experience is spent prepping for those interviews. Um, we have the best part of the management fellows program is that these companies come to us. So we have Eli Lilly, Salesforce, Social Deviant, um, companies all across all sectors of like the business world and consulting and finance and marketing. Um, and these companies are coming to DePaul to interview exclusively DePaul students. So um, you're only competing with your fellow management fellows in your court, in your class, so um, that's such a great opportunity. Um, as I am a political science major, probably pre-law, um, I didn't really want like a more businessy side, so I'm working with the Putnam County Prosecutor's Office right here in Greencastle in the spring, and I'm so excited to get started on that opportunity. Um, and that's just one way that I think you that like really exemplifies that you don't have to be an econ major to be a management fellow. Uh, they'll work with you and they'll get you an experience that proves like that you like really know what you're doing in your field when you graduate. 
Um, but as Becca mentioned, you don't have to be a management fellow to do an internship. Um, I have a friend um, who's also a political science major, but he's in the media fellows program. So um, he's kind of like the flip side of what I'm doing, but um, he's actually going to South Cape Town, South Africa, and he is running their media relations or being an intern for their media relations team um, in the spring for their parliament system. So he's like working with their like PR program uh, and like really like involved in their government. Um, he found that program and worked with the Hubbard Center to get it approved and get all of his like finances in a row um, and get all the credits transferred and everything. So um, yeah, you can do an internship right here in Greencastle or you can go all the way to Cape Town, South Africa um, and you'll have a great time no matter what. <laughs> Very diverse opportunities and in fact, um, Abby mentioned that he uh, applied for funding for his internship to help and we have hundreds of thousands of dollars of grant dollars available for students who might wish to do an internship that isn't paid uh, and yet students we want them to be able to go just about any place to do that. Um, they don't have to necessarily go back home or stay here in Greencastle. So there are funds to provide support for housing as well as um, um, board, room and board for your internship. Um, and often even alumni will host our students um, um, in their cities um, if, if as another option. Um, so on this slide, um, we've talked a little bit about winter term and May term. Um, I, I didn't mention some of the classes that are offered. I guess, uh, Allie, you did with your campanology because you were here. But um, so for instance, if you're interested in going to a medical school, um, we have, as I mentioned, a health professions advisor, Colleen McCracken Rennick. Um, and she's available to students from day one. In fact, if you're a high school senior, she's even willing to schedule a Zoom meeting to talk about um, what your future might look like here at DePaul. Um, but during winter term, you could take our MCAT prep class that includes um, obviously studying for the MCAT, but also working on your personal statement, doing mock interviews with DePaul graduates who are in medical school, taking a field trip to um, Cincinnati to one of the hospitals there where we have a DePaul alum who is the head of pediatrics. Um, and in fact, um, that hospital offers two internships in the summertime for our pre-med students, um, just DePaul students. Um, we have other opportunities locally here for internships for our pre-med students or health profession students to get um, experience. So those are some of the kinds of um, classes. Um, and it could be, again, you know, for someone who um, doesn't want to take a chemistry or biochemistry class, but they, they want to get a little idea of what it's like, they could take the cooking class during winter term um, that's taught by one of our chemistry professors. So it, obviously they look at chemical reactions and um, have a lot of fun and have a cook off at the end. But um, so those are some of the classes that you, you could take here at DePauw. Um, let's see, I wanted to, oh, so on this screen, on this slide, we also have information about uh, faculty student research. And 30% of our students will participate, many of our health professions in the STEM areas. Um, and, and I know Allie, you're in kinesiology and have had that opportunity. But I want to also emphasize that our research grant dollars um, can be used across the curriculum. And we have students doing research in social sciences and um, humanities as well as um, in our STEM areas. And Allie was actually able to um, do some research during the pandemic um, this past summer. Would you like to share some information about that? I would love to. I was really grateful. My It began, it was going to be the study of firefighters and heart health and its correlation to diet because lots of firefighters have heart problems even though they are very strong healthy men and women but then because of the pandemic it transferred over to the dietary habits of division three swimmers and how it affects performance which i actually thought was really cool because it relates to me in my own realm of swimming and that research is now transitioning into my senior project which will be the entire focus of my second semester will be completing this research and actually doing the physical research, not just writing the papers. So yeah, that's my Thanks, experience. Allie. So 
we've talked a lot about academic programs and your career and experiential learning, but I want to emphasize, and I think my students can also support this statement, that it's a lot of fun here at DePaul. Um, and our students tend to be extremely involved in lots of different activities. Um, first of all, um, it is a 100% residential campus, which means that we guarantee housing. And I'm going to stop sharing my screen and let Abby show you what some of our housing looks like and talk a little bit about that, as well as um, what, what our students do uh, for food and meals on campus. So Abby, take it away. Yeah, we are talking about the necessities now. So um, this is a first year dorm actually in our brand new residence hall that was uh, just finished being built uh, this past um, August. So um, brand new dorms, the class year right now is actually the first class to live in these dorms. Um, at DePaul right now, housing looks a little different than it has in the past, but um, every student currently has a single. Um, and DePaul is like obviously maintaining uh, strict COVID guidelines uh, as far as um, like cleaning the residence halls and everything. They're always very good about that, but now um, it's been especially important and they're doing a great job of that. Um, your first year living uh, can either be typically in a non-COVID year. Um, you can live in a single, double, triple, or quad. So we're very accommodating for whatever um, needs or expectations you have for living your first year. Um, and basically the goal for everyone across campus is to make sure you transition to college, both living and like in the academic and athletic and all that setting um, is that it's as easy as possible for you. So um, I know as far as the roommate situation goes, I ended up meeting one of my best friends before uh, school started and we roomed together and it was awesome. But um, if you meet someone in a Facebook group or over Instagram, or um, you can even go random. So uh, whatever you want to end up doing is like totally okay. Um, and hopefully uh, next year, um, you guys can all actually live together. <laughs> and then I'll go ahead and show everyone through the dining hall. Okay, so I'm sure Allie can agree, but this is like my all time favorite place on campus. Um, here at Hoover, um, it's breakfast, lunch, dinner and late night are offered. So um, breakfast, lunch and dinner are pretty self explanatory, but late night is um, runs from nine o'clock to 1145 p.m. And that's basically like uh, chicken fingers, french fries, quesadillas, all that good stuff. So if you need a study break, that's a great spot to go to. Um, the stations themselves uh, running throughout the day are an international station around the corner over there. Um, kind of like a chicken french fry line back here, a deli that runs kind of like Subway, um, more home style food here, and then a really yummy pizza bar here. Um, and then this station kind of changes up. It can be pasta, it can be um, anything they uh, want throughout the day. And then the most dangerous part of Hoover is the soft serve machine. Um, <laughs> I make trips there multiple times a day. Uh, it's kind of a problem, but it's okay. Um, and yeah, so getting into Hoover for a meal is one swipe all you can eat. So um, one meal swipe and you can go back as many times as you want. Um, they're very accommodating about dietary restrictions. So if you're vegan, vegetarian, gluten-free, um, they have options of, like readily available for all of those restrictions. But if you feel like uh, your needs aren't being met, uh, the staff at Hoover is very accommodating. Um, they'll make sure that um, everyone is getting fed, no one's going hungry. And then, yeah. Uh, Becca, you're muted. Sorry. Um, thank you. Um, so I'm going to go back to uh, my PowerPoint and there we go. Um, so uh, as I mentioned earlier, our students are extremely involved in lots of different activities. There are over 120 student organizations. Um, we have 23 intercollegiate varsity athletic teams and actually both Abby and Allie are intercollegiate athletes. Um, and Ellie, you want to talk a little bit about your how you manage to do all of that. You're an intern with our admission office. You're involved in other things, but share a little bit about that. Yeah, so I am a member of the swim team, and I actually find that being a member of a sports team keeps me more on track than during the off season because you have your specific schedule that you know what to keep to. And it keeps me not only on schedule, but motivated to get my work done because I know when practice, I have practice and I know when I have to be in the admissions office and I wanna be ready to do all that I can do to the best of my abilities. So I think it definitely actually helps me get balanced. Very good. Um, 
So let's see, uh, we have, because of our School of Music and our art department, there's something going on um, as far as a performance um, or um, um, a show um, basically every day that our students are here on campus. Um, we also offer um, uh, over 20 plus speaker series and our students really do attend our lecture series. Um, you see a picture here of Malala, she is, um, uh, was here for our oven lecture series, which is our most um, uh, prestigious uh, lecture series. We've brought all kinds of speakers to campus. Um, last fall, I went to see uh, Condoleezza Rice um, with about 2,500 other people. Um, she was able to come early in the afternoon. She taught a class to some of our students stayed for dinner with them, and then um, did her presentation in our large auditorium. Um, all of our lecture series and performances are free to our students, um, athletic events. Um, we feel that that's a part of the, the DePauw experience to have those opportunities available to you. Um, some of the other speakers who have been here, Allie, did you have one that you particularly cared for? Yeah, I was actually going to talk about Malala she was the first speaker my freshman year in 2017. She came, I believe, in September, so I'd only been at DePauw for a month, and I got to see someone so influential in the world, which is, one, an opportunity I never thought I would get. And she was absolutely eye-opening and wonderful to hear everything she said. Just... I run out of words, I'm speechless about how amazing it was. <laughs> but then there's a lot of diversity. So who did you see or, or who do you want to share information about, Abby? Yeah, so there is a lot of diversity with the speakers. Um, for example, my favorite was uh, Ken Jennings, the most winningest Jeopardy winner. Um, a little more lighthearted, more fun. <laughs> um, he was like I literally was in tears from crying like four separate times. He was the funniest person I've ever heard speak. Um, it was incredible. And just the ability to have like, you know, the people from Greencastle and people's parents from Indianapolis came. Um, so we're all like sitting together, just kind of like listening to this person who's like famous on one end, but also like sitting right here in Greencastle, um, just in the same room as us, just telling us about his experience. So that was like a really awesome. And we've had Gorbachev here, we've had President, or Barbara Bush, um, we've had um, um, Jimmy Kimmel was here. Um, so a lot of really diverse, uh, um, but influential people and experts in different fields. Um, so another part of DePaul's experience here is um, um, our Center for Diversity and Inclusion that was just built in the last couple years. Um, it supports over 20 student organizations from African American Association, our international students, first generation college students, um, LGBTQ plus students, um, and they provide activities and events that are open to all of our DePaul students. Um, and we just um, created a new position in the fall of 2019 for our vice president for um, diversity and inclusion, Amanda Kim. And so she has been joined, she has joined our staff as well. Um, I'm excited to announce that we also have our first person of color and our first female president of our university, um, President Lori White. And um, we are very excited to have her join us. Her background has always been in higher education and she is a very student focused um, uh, leader. Um, so I think we're all very excited to um, have her um, now at DePaul leading us. Um, I want to just share quickly some of our statistics. Um, again, we have a goal of 100% um, placement at six months post-graduation. Um, we have an 84% four-year graduation rate. So once you're here, we really want you to graduate and we will help you and provide support to you. Um, if you're familiar with the national average, um, it is less than half of that. And for some students, it takes five or six years even. Um, we have a great track record for our students who apply to medical school with a 90% acceptance rate and law school, Abby, this bodes well for you, um, an 80% acceptance rate. I feel certain that you will be one of those 80%. Um, and we also are ranked as the number one liberal arts college in the state of Indiana, um, which is not listed there, but um, we are still the number one liberal arts college in the state of Indiana. Um, very quickly, um, before our time runs out, I would encourage you to apply to DePaul using the Common App. Um, and um, we are test optional. 
uh, we were test optional starting last year um, prior to the pandemic. Um, and in fact, 26% of our first year students um, chose not to include their um, SAT or ACT scores. We have found that your high school record, your cumulative GPA, the courses that you've been taking, the challenge that you've um, given yourself in your classes is the best predictor for success at DePauw. And ultimately, we want you to be successful here. Um, we look at everything that we know about a student and use a holistic review for um, applicants. So we'll look at recommendations, we um, also look at what activities you'd, you've been involved in, have you held leadership positions, your essay on the application, really everything that we know about you, we include in our review. Um, and we have um, different um, rounds that you could choose to apply for. The majority of our students will choose early action, which is non-binding. But honestly, the earlier you submit your application and it becomes complete, the earlier we can review it. Um, I will review all Ohio applicants, uh, make a recommendation to the committee. Uh, every admitted student is automatically reviewed for merit scholarship. And our scholarships can range up to $35,000 last year. Our um, scholarship calculation has not been finalized this year. I don't anticipate, anticipate it changing dr dramatically. So, um, uh, you know, when you look at our price tag and you look at um, how students are affording to um, come to DePaul, we do recognize your academic achievement. We also offer um, financial aid for in the need-based area. So that means that you would apply with a FAFSA, which just became live today. Um, and uh, you'll see that 60% of our students receive, an, in addition to merit scholarship, um, some need-based financial aid. So if you wish to come to DePaul and we admit you, um, we're going to hopefully make it possible for your individual family to be able to send you to DePaul or afford to help you come to DePaul. Um, and that really is the end of our formal presentation. Um, we do offer um, on-campus visits at this time and um, we will, um, if you go to our website and click on admission and visits and events, you can choose a day Monday through Friday or Saturday mornings to come and visit. Um, it got really sunny in my office, sorry. Um, and um, that would include um, an in-person information session as well as a guided campus tour. Um, it, you could have Abby taking you around on campus. She is one of our tour guides. Um, and you could meet with an admission counselor while you're here. We also offer appointments or Zoom meetings with faculty or staff and coaches are available as well, either in person or um, via Zoom meeting while you're here or at another time. Um, we're very um, hopeful that you will be interested uh, in learning more about DePauw. I would love to have the opportunity to chat with you individually. Um, and so I will reach out to you um, once we, are, we receive the information back from StriveScan. Um, and tonight we have another session. Um, it's a panel session with two DePauw students and alumni. Um, it's at 7 p.m. If you're interested in joining us, um, you can send me an email. Uh, my email address is Becca Moore at B-E-C-C-A-M-O-O-R-E at depaw.edu and I can send you the link to that session. So um, we've enjoyed sharing information with you tonight or this afternoon. And that's, that's about all we have for um, our presentation. So Deb, you're welcome to join us and sign us off. Is she there? <laughs> I am. Okay. Thank, thank you so much, uh, Becca. Abby and Allie, and thank you to all of you who joined us this evening. When you close uh, your window, there will be a link to a very um, quick four question survey. We would really appreciate your input. As a reminder, there are other hosted sessions that you can find on our website at oacac.org. And again, this session is being recorded along with other sessions. And again, you can find them on oacac.org. Thank you all for joining us and have a good evening. Take care. Bye. Thank you.